Welcome to the Step to the Mic podcast. Chris Miles here with my esteemed colleague, Monica McNutt. And today we have a very esteemed special guest, AZ Fudd. Can I get a clap for her, Monica? I need a clap. Absolutely. Turn up. AZ, we're so glad to have you. Thank you guys for having me. I'm excited to be with you guys, talking with you guys. (laughs) All right, for those that don't know AZ Fudd's credentials, uh, the first sophomore to be named the National Player of the Year, that's the end-all, be-all, but also has played for, you know, Team USA national teams, averaged 24 as a freshman, 26 as a sophomore. So let's get into the first time I remember hearing about you, and it was at the Steph Curry camp after your freshman year in high school, and there's this video of this high school freshman, you, playing against Steph Curry in a shootout. You won the shootout against the elite boys, and then you got to face Steph Curry. So when I see you having a shootout against the greatest shooter of all time and holding your own, by the way, you only lost by four, um, I thought, how much confidence does this girl have? So did you just always feel as if you had the ability to compete against anyone and everyone, or do you kind of feel like you gained more of that after competing at Steph Curry's camp? Um, I think confidence is an area that I really grew in. Um, when I was younger, um, I've always played up. I've always played two or three years up, like in AU. So growing up, I've always played with older girls. And honestly, like I had to, when like basketball started to get really competitive for me, once I started to take it more seriously, my parents had to sit down with me and talk to me and be like, AZ, how good do you think you are? And I was like, oh, okay. And they had to tell me that I was actually pretty good and that when I need to, when I step on the floor, I need to believe that I'm the best player on the floor. Um, But since then, I think even now my confidence is still growing a lot. But I do think that my shooting confidence has, since high school, gone through the roof. 100%. It shows in the way you've been able to play. All right, so AZ, of course, we want to get into your love of the game and where it comes from. But I got to make sure I give a shout out to your mom, Katie, who is a Hoya. Shout out to moms. And then, of course, your dad, Tim. So your parents sat you down to have this conversation about your love for the game. Up until that point, were you just playing for participation trophies? Like, when did it switch for you? How old were you when that happened? Um, no. As soon as I started playing, at first I didn't want to play. I didn't like doing anything new. My parents made me play. But once I started playing, I loved it. It was, I just never knew that I was actually good. Like, I just thought I was okay, average. Um, but after we had that talk, like I started to realize, and then I would do more workouts on my own and I started to work harder and longer. And that's when I realized that I actually loved it because of all this extra work and time I was putting into it. Love that. So we, I heard you say it, Monica, love that. I heard you say it, AZ, the love of the game. And then I read about your parents. One went to American, one went to Georgetown. But they got married on a basketball court. <laughs> I mean, if you talk about loving basketball, to be raised in a family like that, what is that atmosphere like? Like, what are some of the crazy stories with your family about their love for the game? I... I think it definitely carries over into the household. I have one of the most competitive families ever. Like, I'm going to be honest with you. We were just, my best friend has a court at her house. So I was just over there shooting and we made a TikTok with basketball. It took us an hour and it was probably at least six arguments because not everyone can make a shot. Um, But it's everything. Um, (laughs) Everything's competitive, especially with basketball. Well, well, we don't play one-on-one anymore. My brothers and I will play. They can't beat me, but... It, it carries over into the house. <laughs> I love that. Please insert. Do not edit. They cannot beat me. AZ said it first. All right, so look, AZ, and I just, I'm so excited to talk to you because obviously this year we had um, the tragic death of Kobe and we lost Gigi. But in terms of where women's basketball is headed and someone like you who is known on a national scene, I mean, you, you're in an Under Armour commercial. Do you feel pressure at all? Or are you still just literally doing this because of how much you love the game and your talent? Um... Honestly, sometimes there is, I, I can't even describe, just sometimes, like, I'll, I'll be, like, a little nervous, um, just about things, like, um, okay, like, I have to perform well, I have to hold myself, obviously, like, at a higher standard on all aspects, because everything I do, there are always eyes on me, but um, I try to just go day by day, step by step, and just remember, like, I'm doing what I love, and you can never take that for granted that's something that um 
Kobe's accident definitely taught me was that nothing is guaranteed. And same with my injury, whether it be playing your sport or being here on this earth and being alive. So you mentioned a, a second ago that your brothers can't beat you. I love that, by the way. But you have proof behind that in this sense. Jalen Green is not going to college. He's going to play in the G League. He's an elite talent. And apparently you beat him in one-on-one. -on -one. So take us through that story and, and how that occurred. And also, I got to give you credit because the very first video I saw of you playing, you were playing against all elite male basketball players and you were cooking them. So give us a story on Jalen Green and your one-on-one -on -one with him. Um, that was also at the Steph Curry camp. We, uh, we were at like a fundraiser for younger kids and it was the end. Everyone was shooting around. We were just messing around and we were like, all right, let's run it. And so we played, I don't remember what we went to, but I beat him by one. He won't admit it. Boys are like that. They Boys are like that. It doesn't say <laughs> Um, but I tell him every time I see him, obviously I got hurt last year, so we couldn't have a rematch, which he wanted, but it will, the day will come, it will happen. And I'm going to go for a two Pete. <laughs> come on two Pete. I love that energy. <laughs> oh, so AZ. All right. So we love what you're doing nationally. The Steph Curry camp is a big deal. The Under Armour ad people know your name nationally, but we're super proud that you are one of our own here out of the DMV area. And you've been all met all of your career now and St. John's has been a very successful program. What kind of pride do you take in this current generation of Hoopers coming out of this area? Um, I think it's different for me just because social media, it makes it so much easier to get in contact with people in both relationships. So I think I've been put in a special place where I'm friends with a lot of the Hoopers, whether it be boys or girls in this area. So especially in my grade right now with everyone committing and the senior class about to leave, um, I'm just really proud of everyone that I've grown up with and have played against and with to see them all succeeding and going to college for free on scholarships and like making their dreams come true. I'm just really proud of everyone. So right after you were named National Player of the Year, okay, you're playing for Team USA, you're a sophomore, first to ever do that, everything's going great. You tear your ACL and your MCL. Take us through how crushing that was, because that was a year ago now, and where you are in, in being back to 100%. Okay, hold on, time out. Before you answer, though, AZ, I just want you to know that that was, like, such a moment, not just for you, but, like, in women's college basketball, too. Like, I remember so many people tweeting at you, encouraging you, because people were, like, really crushed for you. Yeah, no, I'm really – I got a lot of love. I got – that's one thing that really helped me was the support and love from my family and friends, just everyone around me. Um, Cause it's hard. I, I can't even lie. It is really hard. I've had really bad days, even still, I'm not a hundred percent yet, but the rehab process, when I first got hurt, all I could think like we had to drive, we we're in Colorado Springs. So we had to drive to Denver just to get an MRI. And all I could think was like, why? Like you said, like I had just come off one of my best years of basketball winning all these awards, like playing really well. And I was just like, why? Like, why now? Why me? Like, I still had so much I wanted to do that summer. Um, my mom has torn both of hers. So she said, like, you have today to cry, feel woe is me, feel bad for yourself, pity yourself, whatever. But tomorrow we attack this. And tomorrow is like when the process starts and the recovery starts. So the next morning she had me up, we were doing stuff. It wasn't very successful, but it was the effort that counted. Um, but just having my family around me to help me, because um, it was anyone who ever has to go through it knows it's an awful process. It's not really something you can imagine if you haven't been through it. But I'm doing a lot better now. Um, I played almost the whole season this year. I missed a few games, but... I, I wasn't really myself. You could see my progression each game back. I, I was like more comfortable on the court and even still this quarantine, finding the best out of it. And I'm using all this time to rehab almost every day or almost the entire day. Yeah, we know those, uh, those scholarship offers are not coming off the table because of your injury. So everyone knows <laughs> you're still a great player. So take us back. You got your first offer in the sixth grade from the University of Maryland, Brenda Freeze. Um, did you really fully understand what that scholarship offer was when you're in the sixth grade? Because that seems like a crazy thing to get. 
I had no idea what it was. I had my dad, after she said we would like to offer you a scholarship, I kind of just smiled at her and I looked at my dad and they were like, do you know what that means? And I said, no. And they had to explain it to me right there. <laughs> but I had, I had no idea what it was. All right, so Brenda may have had a jump on the competition, but you obviously, number one ranked player in your class, you are highly recruited. What has that process been like for you? Um, it's been good. I have built a lot of really good relationships with amazing coaching staffs and players. Uh, this decision is gonna be really hard. I'm a terrible decision maker, but there's just so many great programs and schools with different, I, I can't even get into it. It's, it's hard. It's really hard. You do realize that you're going to break, I know you've narrowed it down now, but you're going to break six people's, as in university's hearts. I know. You, you got that. I know. <laughs> no pressure, Izzy. No pressure. We know a, a player of your caliber, UConn has to still be on the table, right? What are some of the other schools you're seriously considering? I don't want to say. Okay. I was about to say, Chris, why would you do <laughs> Izzy, I got you, girl. Don't worry about it. I got you. Okay, so look. <laughs> The one thing that makes your generation super unique, besides your talent, you mentioned it a little bit already, social media. And you know, over time, Chloe is someone who we love. We, we love Chloe. And then we've got Women's Slam out there. Um, we've got so many different outlets. How has that sort of changed the game? And how do you make sure, AZ, obviously, the buckets still matter, that you are focused on the basketball and developing, as opposed to, honestly, you have a brand to manage now, too. Um... I think that Overtime and Slam, I think that they've done a really good job of helping raise the women's platform. I remember my first year at Steph Curry when Ball Was Life posted me and then like Overtime, everyone posted me and I went up like 30,000 followers just from that because no one ever posted girls. Like it was rare to see. So if you saw a girl, like that was, that was big. Um, but I think that's it's come a long way. It still has a long way to go as with like comments and stuff. You'll always see hate in the comments, whether it's like old guys saying like get back in the kitchen or stupid comments like that. Um, but I think it's come a long way. And um, one thing when, when you said branding, um, when I went out to LA, I worked out with Kobe and I asked him a little bit about that. And he said, you need to figure out who you want to be and you need to be true to that because you're going to have people telling you to do this and do that. But you have to remember like who you are, what you want to be and like what you stand for before you go do all this crazy stuff just for money or whatever. So I think even I'm young and obviously I don't, I'm not doing much now, but like I keep that in the back of my head, but like my post, whether it's Twitter or Instagram and how I hold myself. So just to piggyback then right now, do you see yourself as, elite basketball player or do you see yourself as trailblazer who do you want to be um i i oh that's a tough question girl that's my job see you <laughs> might still be able to get buckets on me but i got some questions for you <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question um i want to be someone that like i don't want to be just a basketball player i want to be someone that people can look up to on and off the court. Um, mm -hmm. I want to be a great leader where I can push others. Um, but I don't know. I just want to be able to leave a good and positive mark on the game of basketball. Love it. When you say that, and I think of the message that you had in your uh, Under Armour commercial that I recently saw. Um, tell me what you were trying to get across through that commercial, because I've never seen a high school player have such a deep message in a commercial. You're talking about the underrated? Mm -hmm. right. Um, So for Steph, that was kind of how everyone called him underrated his whole life and he couldn't make it to the NBA. But I thought that fit well with my injury and everything that was going on with me at the time. Um, obviously, the DMV is a great place, but it is full of hate. You can't hide that. There's a lot of hate. Um, and there was just a lot of talk about how, like, I don't I don't even know there's a lot of talk but um I just thought that was not really just for me but for everyone that um it's kind of just a message that you can do it like believe in yourself even if others don't believe in you like you, sorry <laughs> you are it. the biggest thing you control you so like you need to believe in yourself you need to push yourself to get there 
I love that. I mean, Aza, you're so obviously we know you're elite in terms of your basketball talent, but also to have this presence and awareness about who you are at this point in your life is fantastic. All right, so look, I want to break it up a little bit and do a couple, a few, more than a couple, rapid fire with you, okay? Girl, my nose is running. I, this is just not, I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> All right, so here we go. It's going to be a combination of like culture things and obviously basketball, okay? All right, you are going to respond with one, one or two words, really quick responses. All right? Okay. Okay. Sabrina Ionescu. Oh, I'm just going to say the first thing that comes to my head. First thing that comes to mind. Uh, amazing. Amazing. All right. TikTok. Addicting. <laughs> Meg the <Thee> Stallion. <gasps> Savage. <laughs> Don Staley. Legendary. Mm, I love that. I love that. Um, let's see. What else we got? There's got to be a few more in there. Um, Washington, D.C. Beautiful. Go to basketball move. In and out cross. Come on, come on, come on, AZ. We love it. We love it. All right, last couple. Um, legacy. Legacy. First thing that pops in mind is Kobe. Mm, that's that's important. I love that. All right, WNBA team. Mystics. Come okay. on. Just had to make sure. I was I wasn't sure if you were gonna go throw back with me, like Houston comments. You probably weren't even born yet, but I just had to check. That's all. <laughs> Monica, she indeed was not born. She was born in 2002. Correct. The competitive reign in the 1990s. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we actually know the answer to that one. That's great. So who's your, who's your favorite player in the WNBA now? Hmm. That's a really tough question. Um, that's really hard. Uh, I really like Sue Bird and Brianna Stewart, but... I am a big fan of the entire Mystics team. <laughs> Love it. That's a very good team. We saw you courtside. We saw you courtside, <laughs> AZ, little, little swag on them. <laughs> what is it that you like about that team, though? Um, I love how they play. Okay. Um, watching them play, you don't see a lot of professional teams share the ball and have as good as of chemistry as they did. It seemed like they really loved each other as – they did the game so it made it made the way they play so much more fun to watch mm. I just like watching them play watching other teams play it was hard to watch they were fun so for you being so good as a freshman coming into high school and you know winning awards early in your career when you play with Team USA and you're traveling around the world to Argentina and Belarus and you're getting to see international competition what did you learn from that experience um it well first of all it gives you uh depending on where you go like I went one year we went to Latvia just to play games um it gives you um a better appreciation of like where you come from kind of just seeing all we have here where and like seeing other countries up close in their cultures and um yeah I just it makes me more grateful just the situation I'm in, but also it's a lot of fun seeing how different countries play, how some are built bigger and stronger, some are more shooters and quick, and it's also a lot of fun just to become friends with all the other great players on our country. The beauty of, so that's so, that's so dope, Izzy. Like, I mean, I can remember coming up and like we knew the girls on the other team and like you gave people respect but I would not have used the word friends about everybody but I think it's dope the way that you guys all support one another yeah so outside of your parents who do you feel like has had the biggest influence on you as a basketball player any coaches that stand out to you um I think it's a good question I would say probably, I don't know, my high school coaches, they've been there for me through a lot, um, and I've been really grateful for the experience I've had with them. I know not everyone has amazing high school experiences like I have so far, um, but I think I've been given the opportunity to work out with a lot of great trainers, so I think Kobe working out with him, that, that's something and he's taught me things I'll never forget. Those were workouts I'll never forget. 
that's amazing. That is, that's just so amazing. I'm so excited for your future. Like it's going to be great. (laughs) (laughs) Well, on that note, AZ, thank you for stopping by the step to the mic podcast. We appreciate your time. And maybe in the future, you know, I got that Candace Parker Jersey right there. Maybe (laughs) I'll have an AZ Fudd Jersey signed. That would be great. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for having me.